Coming up next, Dr. Larry Langston interviews interesting guests from around the world. Dr. Larry and his wife Diane have traveled the world the last 52 years preaching, mentoring, and helping to develop apostolic strategies in ministries around the world. Coming up next, Dr. Larry interviews. Welcome to Dr. Larry interviews, and we've had an awesome interview with Jay West in the past, and now we're coming up on our second interview. I want to take just a moment to welcome Jay once again to the program. It's so good to have you today. We had so much fun the first time. We just had to schedule another one of these. All right. Thank you, Dr. Larry. It was awesome to be with you. Great, great fun with the Lord and with you. It was fun because we were talking about ministry. We were talking about the presence of God. We were talking about how the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge uh, impacts the lives of young people and how lives are transformed when they realize God loves them, God knows them, and he cares about them so much he will send someone with an insight to their life so their life can be transformed forever. We also right. talked about the one-second healing <laughs> that occurred. Why don't we take just a brief moment, Jay, and talk about that girl in the school that hated everybody, including you, and how God transformed her life with a word of wisdom in that meeting. Yeah, this young girl, 11th grade at her school, just, I walked up to her and handed her $20 in the middle of a meeting, and she asked what this was about briefly. Uh, she had prayed that morning. She wasn't a believer, she, so she said it really wasn't a prayer. It was just, she didn't know. She's just, I'm talking to God, but she said, she, she, she told me in advance she hated me, she hated the school, she hated God, she hated everything, but she had prayed that morning that if God was real, somebody would give her $20. In the middle of the message, I gave her $20. And so that was a direct answer to prayer, and she committed her life to the Lord at that, that morning. So that was a wonderful, wonderful event. So, <laughs> And all the other students were amazed because they, they said she was the meanest girl in school, didn't get yeah. along with anybody, hated her parents, hated the school, hated the faculty, hated you didn't right. believe in God. <laughs> and right. while you're teaching these young people, the Lord gives you a word of, of knowledge about her, and you go and open up your wallet and give her a $20 bill. She starts crying. She gives her heart to the Lord. All the other right. students are just wowed by this, right? right. And, it, you know, I think initially all the students thought it was part of my talk, but it wasn't. It didn't even relate. And, and she verified. She confirmed it when she said, I prayed this morning, somebody give me $20, you know, so they all knew that God was doing this, not me and not her. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, God is real and God will show up. And when she said, God, if you're real, have someone give me $20 today. And I'll tell you, God will accept the challenge. Well, it's so good right. having Jay West with us. He is a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ for several decades. He's been a pastor. He travels extensively. He is involved locally with the local uh, ministers and leaders of the community. And I guess what we could say is that Jay doesn't just preach about the kingdom of God, which is wonderful, but he demonstrates the love of God and manifests the kingdom of God through local involvement with the leaders in the um, area and also national leaders um, in ministry uh, gatherings, but also national uh, leader of prayer movements. Uh, goes to Washington, D.C., meets with people in the White House, prays with political leaders. This man is all over the place for the glory of God. <laughs> yeah, I often say I, it's the favor of God because I'm just a very small minnow in a very big pond, okay? so Oh, my gosh. Uh, He's a just, big man in the flesh. He's six seven. I'm six two or and a half or three, but I look up to him. He's six seven. But I look up to him in the spirit as well. He's a giant in the spirit. But Jay will say, tell you. I say I'm six seven and 200, none of your business pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but Jay wants you to know, and I want you to know that God wants to use you as well. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are not just for the church building or just for church gatherings. They're for everywhere you go. And Jay, you pray for people on planes. Uh, in the White House, and Congress, and the, the mayor's office, uh, anywhere and everywhere, uh, how are you led to pray for people, or do you just spiritually impose yourself into their presence? How does this work? So for me, it's John 5, 19. Jesus said he only did what he saw the Father doing. So I will go into a situation, and 
or even if I'm in the middle of it, I'll be talking to somebody and I'll be asking God, am I supposed to pray for this person? And normally I'll hear yes or no. And if I hear no, I don't force it because, you know, I grew up in Southern California and I grew up with citrus fruit and avocados and oranges and lemons and, and grapefruit and so on. You know, an orange can look ripe, but you can tug on it and tug on it. It won't come off. You'll pull the whole branch off before you get the orange ripe. But when they're ripe, all you have to do is tap the orange. Just tap it. It'll fall right into your hand. Okay. Wow. And so if, if the fruit is ripe, then they're ready for prayer. And, and God will tell me, no, don't pray today. No, don't pray today. And I'll say, okay, fine. Isaiah 119 says, if you're willing and obedient, God will give you good of the land. And so I don't try to force it. I look for ways to bring God up in the conversation. Sometimes the people bring God up on their own. They bring up a need. Hey, how are you doing? And they'll say, well, I'm doing fine. My back really hurts. I'll, I'll steer the conversation around to, hey, can I pray for your back? You know, and, and they'll, often they'll like, I can see the hesitancy. And I say, you don't have to be religious. You don't have to bow your head. You don't have to close your eyes. It'll be just like you and me talking. They go, oh, okay. And I'll, I'll say a short prayer and I'll say, check your back. And oftentimes it'll be better or it'll be totally well. And so it's just looking for those opportunities. Um, Leonard Ravenhill said the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. And so there's opportunities and sometimes there's a window that's just barely open. And you're like, okay, I can go through this window and I can make a difference or I can bypass it. And, and oftentimes I miss it. I'm sure you miss it. You know, we say, oh, I should have done that. I should have done that. But we come back and we go, okay, we'll do better next time. So anyway, that's kind of my philosophy. Well, I like what you said. Leonard Ravenhill said, and correct me if I misquote it, the opportunity of a lifetime has a limited lifetime opportunity. Is that how he said it? How did he say it, Jay? The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. Wow. So basically, I tie that, I tie basically, that in with Galatians. It says, as you have the opportunity, do good unto all men, especially the household of faith. Hmm. So there's an opportunity there. And sometimes that lifetime is very short. It's only one or two minutes. Maybe so other times it would be three months long. But in this case, you've got two minutes. How are you going to use it? You know, exactly. I think that people could be encouraged if they realize that we're told that most people don't make a decision for Christ. And after until they've heard the gospel or or ministry input seven times. And if people understand, they have a, a part in this process. Even the Apostle Paul said that. That, that one had watered, uh, you know, one uh, ministered, one watered, but God gave the increase. Right. So we all have a part in this process. And sometimes people will minister to someone and the, the skies will open and uh, the person's heart is open and they see dramatic results and they don't realize that they might have been number six or number seven in that person's life. Right, right. And so, you know, and often if they see the supernatural connected with it, They'll, they'll move through those other stages, those other 15 slots really fast because something just supernaturally happened and they go, okay, you piqued my interest. Let's go to the next step. So, Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. There was a woman you prayed for, and we've been talking in the previous episode about praying for people wherever we are. You pray for people on airplanes. You, you pray for the, the, uh, the, the flight attendants. You pray for the pilots. But you prayed for a woman that was on a walker, and you prayed a one-second prayer. Would you share that with us again? Basically, she uh, her leg, one leg was shorter than the other, and her right knee was hurting really bad. And it, it, I really prayed. I really prayed fifteen or twenty seconds. But the miracle happened in the in the first second. And wow. I just said, I started a prayer. I said, "Lord, her her leg." My son was with me. He verified it, and, and she verified it later because we have it on video. Her leg grew out two inches. And then about 20, about 35 seconds later, I said, stand up and check it out. She, she could walk fine on the video. She says, I have no pain. And we watched her walk back and forth. And you could see her walkers in the background as she's walking. We have another testimony, if you don't mind. Just, it was seven years ago uh, in October. It's one month shy of October now because it's September. Uh, a lady on the day we uh, planted our church, a lady in our church, her, her name was Sharon. She was scheduled for knee replacement surgery. 10 days later, and she was walking with a walker very slowly. And I offered to pray for her out of compassion because I said I didn't want her recovering in the snow and ice season of Omaha, you know, mm -hmm. and it would be slippery and everything else. I said, let's just pray for your knee tonight. She said, okay. I had a very short prayer. She felt warmth come over her knee. She went up and down three, three steps very easily without her walker. She tried all week long to get her knee to hurt. She jumped up and down on it. She bent it backwards. Now she was she was 77 at the time. She's 84 now. Wow. She went to her doctor, which is my doctor. We share the same doctor. And my doctor, her doctor is is a uh, 
is a believing doctor who believes in healing, and he was a pastor at one time. And he checked her out thoroughly, canceled the knee replacement surgery. That was seven years ago, and she's never had it. So, and I, I didn't pray for her to get well because I was concerned about the pain. I was concerned about her recovery during snow and ice season here. So God still used it. So, you know, says of Jude, some having compassion make a difference. So that's, yes, that's what I learned. You're exactly yeah. right. I believe that God puts that spirit of compassion in our hearts for people. And I, I'm having a, an opportunity. It's not a problem, but I notice when I see people everywhere I go and I look deeper and I, I see their need, I see their confusion, I see their, their heartache, I see their pain, but I also see opportunities for God to work in their life. And people are so open to ministry. I've never... Uh, had anyone curse at me or uh, be rude to me or tell me to mind my own business. People are open for the touch of God in their lives, aren't they? All right. And you know, you can even use the cursing. I Somebody used the SH word one day and they said, excuse my French. And I said, well, it's not French, it's Hebrew. They said, what? <laughs> I said, it's Hebrew. And I said, it comes from the Old Testament word shatim, which is in Joshua chapter three, S-H-I-T-T-I-M. It's a Hebrew word, not a French word. And they go, what? And they, they open up the door to witness to them. So anyway. So, exactly. Yeah. It's very just, good. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to remember that one. You mentioned earlier that the window of opportunity sometimes is there for just a moment. And what Jay and I are talking about is ministering to people in public, sharing the love of God, sharing and ministering with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But we have to be alert. We have to be looking for opportunities. We must be listening. And Jay said the way he operates is that Jesus said, uh, the, you know, the son does nothing except what he sees the father do. And as Jay walks around and sees people that have needs and he senses in his spirit to minister to him, he does so. <clears throat> Though we have to be listening. My wife and I were in a business yesterday and we were talking to an individual there and he just used the word God. He just said, you know, God's been, we're talking about business issues. And he said, well, God's been good to me. And when my wife heard that, she saw that as an open window and we developed that into a ministry time. So we listen closely, don't we, Jay? Yeah, yeah. You listen closely to what they're saying and watch their body expressions. And you know, a lot of things are going on. And I'll tell you, I've got, you know, I'll just share real quickly. I, I, was, I was in a grocery store line. It was actually Target. And uh, I was going through the line and uh, the lady took my credit card. She's a sweet black lady behind the counter. And she took my credit card and it didn't work. So the machine out front wasn't working. She had to do it behind. So I said, let me try. And she said, okay. And I scanned it and worked immediately. And uh, uh, she said, my, you must have the Midas touch. And I said, yeah, I think I do. And then I said, no, I think I have the target touch. And she smiled over and she said, yes. And then I boldness came on me. I said, you know what? I think I have the God touch. She said, I think you do have the God touch. And then her hand came up to do a high five. And so we did a high five right there in the aisle. She spun around in the aisle on her side of the register. I didn't want to be outdone. So I spun around in the aisle on my side, seriously. <laughs> At that point, everybody in our line backed out and said, we're leaving this line. They went somewhere else, which is hilarious. But then I got to talk to her for about 10 minutes. And we witnessed and we shared scriptures and I prayed with her and I said, what's going on? She said, well, I came in late today. I've been here 15 years. I came in late for the first time. And who knows when my boss chewed me out. I was having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. And then you came through my line and I've got six and a half more hours. And now I can make it because you came through my line. Wow. And it, was, it was it was about witnessing and just sharing. It's a God touch. And, and that led to the high five and the spin. But it was sweet. It was it was relevant. It was what she needed at that moment. Absolutely. You know, we never know what one kind word, what ministry encouragement, what word of encouragement, what healing touch can change someone's right. life forever. Right, right. And so you just be open, watching. And I'm I'm an extrovert. Now, my wife is an introvert. My son's somewhat of an introvert, but I'm an extrovert. And uh, my friends know me. They say, Jay can talk to anyone, anywhere, at any time. And that's really true. <laughs> well, you've also had the opportunity to minister to different people in the public office, might yes. be referred to as politicians, uh, legislators, senators. Um, mm -hmm. I know you met with um, previous Vice President Mike Pence just a few weeks ago, 
And yes. that, did that come about through your your ministry as a national director of, of prayer ministries? And uh, correct me on the, the terminology there, but how did it come about that you begin to minister to people in public office so often? Well, actually, the, the initial thing came out of uh, just being asked to do it back in 2011. The more recent ones, being with Vice President Pence, came about was uh, one of our congressmen. I know his chief of staff here in town. He called me on the phone. He said, the vice president's going to be in town. Would you like to meet with him? I said, that'd be awesome. I said, be happy to shake his hand. And he said, great, I'll set it up. And so he set it up for my son and I to go. And then a day before the event, he called me, said, you've been upgraded to VIP status. I said, what does that mean? He said, it means you get to actually spend a little time talking with him. You have a picture taken with him. I said, how did that happen? He said, it's just a favor of God. I was talking to somebody who's running it. And they said they had a couple more openings. And I mentioned your name. And so the majority of people there were either were either politicians or they were big time givers. And then there's my son and I. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, and the governor was there. I already have a relationship with them. A couple of the congressmen are there. I already have a relationship with them. Um, I'm having lunch next week with our lieutenant governor here in Nebraska. He and I are friends. Uh, I, I, it, God's just opened some amazing doors that, again, like I said on the last show, I'm just a small minnow in a very big pond. But God gives me a lot of favor. And here's the thing. Um, they, they trust me because I pray with them. I get words of knowledge. They give me their cell numbers. Nobody sees their numbers. I never criticize them. I never ask them why they voted a certain way. I never bring up anything negative. It's my, that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to encourage, to pray, and to prophesy and give them a hope for what they're doing, whether they're saved or not. Yeah. And so without exception, uh, everyone that I've met with has never, never given me a bad name or said anything bad about me because they trust me. And I think that's important. If you build trust, then you can talk about Jesus. You can talk about the Lord. You can talk about the Bible. You can talk about other things down the road. I don't try to jam it down their throat the first time we meet. Um, you know, somebody, I'll just say this real quickly. Somebody, somebody asked me, they said that I should have brought up a different subject with the vice president. I said, not my responsibility. If you want to, you can, but that's not me. My responsibility was to encourage him, to bless him, pray for him briefly, and, and, and see him excel in, in what God has for him. And so that's what I do. I take my role very seriously. Absolutely. Now let's talk about the, uh, the prayer ministry. Would you give me the name of that ministry again and tell us briefly how that came about and some of the doors just opened and responsibilities as well regarding prayer? So it's the United States National Prayer Council. And each state has a representative, and I'm the Nebraska representative, but God has enabled me to cross state lines now and minister in a number of other states with other political leaders, including going to D.C. Uh, two years ago, I met personally with Ben Carson for almost 90 minutes, and we prayed together, and we were in the vice president's office, and uh, uh, we were in the State Department at that time with uh, uh, Sam Brownback, who was the uh, ambassador for religious freedom. Mike Pompeo was his boss, and... Uh, it's interesting because Sam is a former governor of Kansas and he and I are very close friends. I was just recently at his home. And, uh, and, and so he's just one of many uh, political leaders at various levels. But I pray with railroad commissioners and county commissioners and uh, uh, voter re registration uh, leaders. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a public servant. I, I just connected with our local fire chief and I met with him last week. And so um, whatever doors God opens for me. Uh, then I walk through those doors. And if the doors aren't open, I just pray that they will open. I don't try to barge and knock them down. Uh, I just wait for them to open. So That's incredible. Do you think, Jay, that more people should emulate that example and ask God to open doors so that we can minister to people? I know the Apostle Paul was writing once, and he mentioned, you know, those that are of Caesar's household, the saints in Caesar's household, and so there are people at every level that need to hear the gospel, that need to know the love of God. And God cares for them so much. And what an opportunity he's given you to minister at nearly every level of society. How do other people begin to do this? You know, I think they just need to look for ways. First of all, uh, I was just talking to a friend the other day who's on, who's running for school board. And uh, I said, how did you get in to the school board? How did you get into that? He just said, well, they were, they were dealing with a policy that I don't agree with. And he said it was a closed meeting. And I just went up and said, I'm a taxpayer. I'm allowed to come in here. And they agreed. They let him come in. And so I think you just use the avenue that God presents. And then you look for the doors. You don't come in with your Bible in your hand, thump it on the head or whatever. You come in tactfully, kindly, 
you know, a uh, Bible says the soft answer turns away wrath rather than shouting and being mad. How about a soft answer and just come in meek, humble, willing to serve. I have another friend in Indiana uh, and he's, he started serving his, his, uh, his city council. He brought them in the summer, he brought them ice cream sodas and, and milkshakes. And then in the winter, he brought them sweet rolls and different things. He started showing them these meetings and they began to open up the meeting to him. Then they asked him to pray. And now he's serving them in a variety of ways. And he's the chaplain for their city now. And, yeah. and he just started by serving and bringing food to them and blessing them. So uh, I think you look for ways to uh, be utilized by God. He knows what's best for each situation, each group of people. For, for that group, it was milkshakes and ice cream sodas. But somebody else, it'd be something else. You know, it wouldn't be the same. Jesus prayed. Here's the thing. Jesus prayed for six different blind people in the Bible, six different ways. Okay. Mm. He didn't that again. He prayed he, for six different blind people in six different ways. Is that what you said? Right. Right. He didn't follow a method. Okay. He followed what the father was doing. Mm. All right. So, you know, uh, you, Jesus had to do what the father is doing. We have to do what the father is doing and, and go along and not be in a hurry and not try to say the American church. So, you know, they find a method, the 40 days of this, the 30 days of that, you know, one church down the street has a bus ministry. So they think they're supposed to have a bus ministry. Another church down the street has a single strong, single, they're supposed to have a single ministry or a school. You got to find out what God wants you to do and then do that to the best of your ability, not copy somebody else. We're so into cloning and being like whoever, you know, and, you know, most we're all born original, but most of us die a copy. I want to stay an original. I think you do, too. So, <laughs> well, you mentioned some important um, attributes. I heard you say serving the gentleman that began serving in his city council with bringing them refreshments, serving right. and blessing serving right. and blessing. What an right. example. And I know that you and your family and, and friends and your church have served people when they were sick, you took them meals, uh, when they were incapacitated, you mowed their grass. I mean, here, Jay, you're in the White House, but you're in your neighbor's house. So right. I think as we avail ourselves of the opportunities God can take us anywhere he needs us if we're willing to do whatever is at hand. Right. You know, we, we have 24 fire stations here in our city, and we've on multiple times taken them food, frequently taken them bags and bags of homemade cookies, go to every fire station with groups of people, offer to pray for them. Every single fire station said, yes, you can pray for us. Wow. You know, and uh, receive the cookies. And so we've kind of started it. I'm not saying others weren't doing it, others were too, but other churches started seeing that, hey, the the police department, the fire department, the EMS, the, you know, our, our first responders, you know, going to pray for nurses, going to pray for doctors, uh, whoever it is. I, I look for my trash men in the summer. I look for them and I see them coming down the road. I'll go grab a couple of cold waters or a couple of sodas and I'll take them out and stand by the curb. I'll wait for them to get to my door or my driveway. And then I'll, I've given them sodas and they'll stop. They get out of the truck and have a conversation. And they'll let me pray with them. Absolutely. You know? So nobody thinks, about, nobody thinks about the trash man and how dirty of a job it is and how hot it is and everything else. And I'm like, they're just people. They're people with a job, you know, and they're coming to your house. When people come to your house, I have people call me to, to witness. And if it's, they say, people call you? I say, yeah, telemarketers call all the time, okay? And they can't, they can't hang up on you, okay? So uh, I, I witness to lots of telemarketers. So. <laughs> so I think one writer said, blessed is he that sows beside all waters. And that is you, Jay West. You are touching people at every level uh, and you're ministering of the love of God. And what co continues to uh, well up in my spirit is that God loves people. He cares about people. John 3.16 tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you are a purveyor of the light. You are shining the love of God everywhere you go. And I'm praying for you, viewers. I'm praying that you will catch this vision and understand that God can use you wherever you are. I sense that someone is saying, but Dr. Larry and, and Dr. West, you don't understand. I'm just a I'm just a, a, a little believer in Christ. No, my friend, you are a giant. God has already put the measure of faith in you because the scripture tells us he's given to every man the measure of faith. So you begin to speak. If nothing else, just say to people, God bless you today. God loves you today. 
And out of that, you will see opportunities begin to develop, but don't feel like that you've got to You've got to witness to them, share the whole gospel with them, baptize them, serve them communion, and get them all ready for heaven. You just have a part to play, and it may just simply be sharing the love of God with everybody you meet. But I will tell you, it's addictive. You start sharing Jesus with others, then the first thing you know, you want to do it every day. And then everywhere you go, you're going to be looking for opportunities, and you know what's going to happen The more you're open to God using you, the more opportunities you're going to encounter, and the more people are going to be ready to meet Jesus when he returns because of our obedience to him. Well, Jay, it's exciting and adventurous and fun, is it not? Yeah, you know, just let me add, you you quoted Romans 12, 3 there, that the faith is given with a measure, you know, and and the reason it's given with a measure, he expects us to grow it, all right? He Mm. expects us to add to it. But it says in John 3.34 that the Holy Spirit's given without measure. Wow. Okay? And so the Holy Spirit has come without measure. He just comes in with whatever you need as you're going and walking out in your faith, you know. And I some people pray, some people pray for a double portion anointing. And I'm like, well, what if you need five times the amount? What if you need ten times the amount? You've limited yourself by praying for a double portion. Just <laughs> a measure is it's without measure. It's, so I, even and I'll just be a little theological. How can you double something that has no measure to it? Wow. Well, wow. I can, I can, I got this bottle of water and I can measure how much is in here and I can double it. I can double it again. I can double it again. But something has no measure. How can I double it? Wow. You know, Look so at that. Just take That's incredible. It, just take the Holy Spirit that he's given you coupled with your faith and step out and see what God does. You know, absolutely. Well, we yeah. only have about a minute left, but this has been an exciting interview. Uh, I've placed Jay's uh, contact information throughout the program. So you can write him, you can contact him for prayer for ministry opportunities. He's very busy, sometimes three and four and five times a week. He's ministering, touching people, seeing lives change. And so his contact information is there. And of course, this is going to be aired and is being aired at Best Life TV Network. But you can also go to the website, uh, bestlifetv.org, to the video on demand. And if you didn't see the first interview, you really missed a wonderful session, but you can go to video on demand and see the other interviews that we're having with Jay and other ministry opportunities there as well. Jay, would you pray for our viewers right now and just bless them and ask God to use them for his glory? Yeah, and I'll just say, you know, I would love to come to your place and teach you and size is no issue. The smallest church I ever did was five. The biggest church I ever did was three or four thousand. But honestly, I just love to come and teach you all how to do this and mm. equip you, you know, awesome. and empower you. And we take teams out and they start doing it and they go, wow, I didn't know it was this easy. So anyway, so Father, we just thank you for the audience that was watching today and believe that you're going to do just extraordinary, incredible, amazing, uh, inspiring, challenging and anointed things in their life, Lord. And I pray that you would um, equip them even right now and have them begin to think in their minds that, yes, I can do this. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you begin thinking right now that you can do this, you will be able to do it because you'll be, you'll be able to convince yourself and the power of God will be there. Jesus, the anointing will be there without measure. And you'll begin speaking forth and calling those things which are not as though so they were. And you'll be able to do that over your own life and just say, yes, I can witness to one person a week. And then it'll be one person every three days, one person every day. Pretty soon you're doing two or three a day because the power of God is coming on you. Jesus so loved the world. He wants to use you to reach other people. And so I pray that every person watching will begin to walk in that anointing and that empowerment. And they'll bless Dr. Larry for his show and they'll see God work in their lives. And we thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Jay, it's been such a pleasure being with you. And I'll go ahead and let the viewers know that we will have another interview uh, with uh, Dr. Jay West. It's been a pleasure having you today. No no doctor here. You got the doctor. I don't have (laughs) it. Well, you're a mighty man of God. Six, seven in the flesh, but I look up to you in the spirit. And just thank you for what you're doing all over the world. And the viewers will be back with you here at Best Life TV Network. You can also check us out at bestlifetv.org to watch the interviews and the other exciting programs there. God bless you. We'll be back with you soon here on the Dr. Larry Interviews Program. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.